Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, if y'all don't know me, I'm EJ. I'm associate pastor here at Cedarwood Community Church, and we just want to say here at Cedarwood that we miss, we love y'all, uh, we miss y'all so much. We hope you're doing well. We hope you're staying positive uh, through all of this. We hope you've been enjoying Pastor Clint's messages and Bible studies. And um, we just, again, we're just keep praying for us. We're going to keep praying for y'all for this mess to be over. Uh, and having said that, let's, let's all pray together. Father, we just uh, we thank you so much uh, just for your love, your mercy, your grace, Lord. And we pray that that this coronavirus, you know, ends soon, that we can get back to normal and, and start meeting together again. Uh, we miss each other, uh, and we want to see each other, Lord, and you know that. You know our hearts. So, Lord, but we do ask that your will be done in this situation, and that whatever happens through all of this, that you receive the glory and honor. And uh, we just pray for all those out there that are struggling right now, that are just uh, feeling the weight of all this, that may be sick, suffering, Maybe they've lost somebody they've loved recently, Lord. We pray for all those. We lift them all up to you. Encourage them. Uh, strengthen them. Just shower them with love, mercy, and grace, Lord. And uh, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we do have a couple announcements again, uh, like we do every week. Uh, the staff and I, and we've been discussing uh, the upcoming services. We are going to still hold off for at least a couple more weeks uh, before we meet together. And we'll... We're just, we're just kind of taking this week by week. We want you all to be safe. Safety is the most important thing for you, uh, uh, for you guys. So we just, uh, we're taking this week by week and um, we'll keep you updated on, on everything and what we're gonna decide to do. But we are again still holding off on Sunday services for at least a couple more weeks. Uh, you can continue to you know check it, check out the Sunday morning services uh, on YouTube and the Wednesday night Bible studies. We hope you guys have been enjoying that. And I'm also doing a couple messages a week uh, on Facebook Live, uh, Mondays and Thursday nights. And I do want to let, uh, encourage y'all, if you are feeling disconnected, you know, we're, we're doing the Zoom meetings for Sunday school meetings, uh, you know, check those out. So at least you can get to see some of, some of the folks' faces and you can talk to each other and just kind of feel connected a little bit. But uh, we want to encourage y'all to check out those Zoom meetings uh, if you have not already. And uh, we also want to remind you all about our church app. You know, uh, you're able to give an offering or pay your tithes through our church app. If you have not downloaded that, we, we, you can do that uh, in the App Store, uh, Cedarwood Community Church app. And um, again, we just want to let you all know we miss you all so much. We love you all. We're praying for you all. And if there's anything that we can do to help you all out, please reach out to somebody. Reach out to one of the staff members. Um, call your deacon, whatever. Uh, we're here to help. Uh, we're here to support in any way. So just, you know, don't hesitate to ask. And we, again, we just love y'all. We miss y'all. Good morning. I'm Andrea Comfort, the children's minister here at Cedarwood. And I just want to wish everybody a, a happy Sunday. And I want to take a moment to speak to the families of our children. I know this past Wednesday with the announcement of Governor McMaster and um, the superintendent's announcement that the schools will be closed to the end of the school year. I know you probably received that with mixed emotions. Um, some parents are probably glad that they're not having to make their kids go back to school during this time, especially if any of you have had any um, health concerns for their children. Um, but you've also probably been like, okay, we still have to do this some more school at home. I just want to encourage you, you are all doing an awesome job teaching your kids at home and you will continue to do so through the rest of the school year. And just, I want you to know that I'm here for you. If you have any prayer concerns, um, just reach out if you need anything. You're in my prayers, would love and miss you.
Thank you, Christine. And good morning, Cedarwood Church. I hope everybody is comfortable in their recliner, got their cup of coffee. And, you know, what worries me is that when we come back from all this and start meeting in our church again, I'm afraid we're going to have to get recliners because people are so used to sitting that way. So let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can still come together, even if it may be through video. We're still able to meet as a church and, and nothing can stop that. And so just ask you to be with us as we study your word and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As I've been calling uh, and reaching out to some of you uh, within the congregation, I, I always ask the question, well, how are you doing? And the number one answer that I've been getting is, I'm lonely. I'm lonely. And so today, during our, our series called Crisis 2020, I want to deal with that issue of loneliness. The Gallup Association says this, that Americans are the loneliest people on the planet. They say that over 40% of Americans say that they are experiencing loneliness. And, and I would be willing to bet that during this pandemic that number is actually risen. So have you ever experienced loneliness? Maybe you went through a divorce and you've been married a long time and you're, you're experiencing loneliness. Maybe you lost your spouse and you're experiencing loneliness. Maybe your children have moved out and now you're an empty nester for the first time. My, my wife and I went through that a couple of years ago. And, and you experience loneliness when all of a sudden those children that have been in your home for so long, all of a sudden they move out. Maybe you're a teenager and you're starting a new school. Maybe you're starting a, a new job. Maybe you you've moved to a new city. Maybe you're visiting a, a new church. I, I know in my life, the, the loneliest I ever was is when I moved from Texas to Virginia. My dad got transferred. I was a, uh, in college, start, about to start my sophomore year. And my mom was so upset and lonely about leaving the rest of her kids. They were all married, couldn't move. I ended up moving to Virginia and I didn't know anybody. Started a new school, didn't know anybody in the school, and you, you, you kind of have some loneliness because you don't know anybody. So one of the questions today that I want to answer is how do you overcome loneliness? Because loneliness is one of the most miserable feelings that you will ever feel. It makes you feel like nobody loves you. It makes you feel like nobody cares that you exist. And here's the thing, you don't even have to be alone to feel lonely. You ever felt lonely in a crowd? When I was in sales, I used to travel every week, and so I'd had to go down to Atlanta every week. And I, I would be uh, going out to restaurants at night, and I'm sitting there by myself, and the restaurants are packed with people. Remember when restaurants were packed with people and you could go there? And I'm just feeling lonely. I'm sitting there eating my meal alone, and, and that's the thing. It, it's not the number of people around you that determines your loneliness is the relationship that you have with those people. And so many people experience loneliness. They can be rich and famous. They can be poor and unknown. Anne Hathaway, the actress, said this, loneliness is my least favorite thing about life. The thing that I'm most worried about is just being alone without anybody to care for or someone who will care for me. Albert Einstein, the great scientist, said this, It is strange to be known so universally and yet be so lonely. Ernest Hemingway, the famous writer, said, I live in a vacuum that is as lonely as a radio tube when the batteries are dead and there's no current plugged into. Marilyn Monroe said this, Sometimes I feel the only people who stay with me and really listen are the people I hire, the people I pay. Everyone experiences loneliness. And today, we're going to unpack 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we're going to see how Paul dealt and overcome loneliness. Paul was at the end of his life, and 2 Timothy is the last book that he wrote, and chapter 4 is the last chapter, the last words that Paul wrote that we have. He's an old man. He's in prison in Rome. He, he's waiting to be executed by Nero, and all his friends have left him. 
And he is very lonely. And so in this story, we're going to learn what four common causes of loneliness. So let's, let's read the whole passage and then we'll, we'll unpack it. Starting in verse 6. It says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time for my departure is close. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. This is reserved for me the future of crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have loved his appearing. Make every effort to come to me soon, for Demas has deserted me, because he loved this present world and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescent has gone to Galatia. Titus to Dalmaia. Only Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you, for he is useful to me in the ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak I left to Troas with Carpus, as well as the scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did great harm to me. The Lord will repay him according to his works. Watch out for him yourself because he is strongly opposed to our words. At my first defense, no one stood by me, but everyone deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the proclamation might be fully made through me and all the Gentiles might hear. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil work and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Priscilla and Aquila and the house of Osipius. Erastus has remained in Corinth. I left Trophimus sick in Malias. May every effort to come before winter. Eubulus greets you, as does Tudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers. So let me give you the four basic causes of loneliness. The first one is transitions, transitions in our life. Anytime we have a change or a transition in life, it change can bring loneliness in our life. Have you found that to be true? Let's say you start a new school. You don't know anybody, but that there's a change there. All of a sudden, it can create loneliness. Maybe some of you experienced when you went off to college and you didn't know anybody and you experienced loneliness. Maybe it's the first time you were away from home. Uh, you start a new job and then you can create that loneliness. You retire. You lose a loved one. And see, here's Paul. He's an old man. He's facing death, and everybody has deserted him. Let's so read verse 6. It says, For I have already been poured out as a drink offering, and at the time for my departure is close, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Can't you just feel what Paul's going through? He says, I'm being poured out like a drink offering. Have you ever felt like you've been poured out like a drink offering? How many of you are retired? When you were, did you have some people that you thought you were close to, that, that you thought were friends of yours? And then all of a sudden you retired and what happened? A lot of those folks you never ever saw again. And unfortunately what happens, a lot of people will be your friends as long as they can get something from you. But once they can't get anything from you anymore, you never see them anymore. So here's Paul. And he knows that he doesn't have long in this world. Can you imagine what it might have been like to be Paul knowing that you're going to be executed, but you don't know when? But you know it's coming and you know that you don't have much time left in this world. Why is it that we leave people who are dying alone? Did you know that the loneliest people in the world are in rest homes? The statistics show that 70% of those in a rest home have nobody that ever visits them. 
When I was a Gideon, we went to one of the restaurants in Fountain Inn and we were distributing Bibles to all of the, the residents there. And I'll never forget, I came across one room and there was about eight people that lived in this room. It was a men's dorm room. And there was one man in the corner in a bed. He was deaf. He was blind. And he was paralyzed. And they said that he had been there for 10 years. His mind was good, but he couldn't talk to you, couldn't understand you, and nobody in that whole 10 years had come to see him. And I'm thinking, what a horrible existence that would be. I think about Diane Wissinger, one of our own, longtime member of Cedarwood, who got sick and, and kind of went downhill very quickly and was put into a nursing home in Rock Hill. And as she was dying, not being able to, to be with her family, fortunately they were able to go there the, the night before she passed away. But can you imagine the loneliness she must have felt in dying alone? And see, any new experience that we have brings loneliness. And the second thing that, that brings loneliness is separation. Separation causes loneliness. Being isolated and being apart from our family and our loved ones causes loneliness. Uh, how many of you are experiencing loneliness because of the quarantine? I was talking with Barbara Horton yesterday and she was telling me about her new grandbaby. And she's like, that great, that baby will be walking and talking before I get to see it. And you could just tell the loneliness and her just wanting just to squeeze that child. Uh, I've been to Joe Jones been posting pictures of her new grandbaby. And you can just tell she cannot wait to see that. Do you think they're experiencing some loneliness? I know me not getting to see my grandchild, I mean, all I want to do is just hug her, right? And it creates this loneliness. Loneliness comes when we are isolated from our loved ones. And Paul is isolated from those that he loves. In, in verse 9 it says, and he says this to Timothy, make every effort to come to me Soon. I mean, you can almost hear him begging Timothy. He's like, get here ASAP. I need you. But as we continue to read, he mentions his best friends and, and his closest friends, and he misses them, and none of them are there except for Luke. It says in verse 10, For Demas has deserted me because he loved this present world, and he has gone to Thessalonica. Crescent has gone to Galatia. Titus to Dalmea. Only Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you, for he is useful to me in the ministry. I have Chichicus to Ephesus, Greek Priscilla and Aquila, and the household of Osipius. Erasus has remained in Corinth, and I left Trophimus sick and Malias. Boy, that was fun to read. Think about Paul. He's a people person. He, he, he never went anywhere by himself. He always had a traveling companion. And now he's at the end of his life and he's stuck in a foreign jail. And the thing is, he couldn't text anyone. He couldn't call anyone. He couldn't chat with them on Instagram or Facebook. He couldn't even use Zoom. And Paul was lonely. And he was separated from those that he loved. Did you know that 25% of Americans move every year? 25%. How many of you moved here from a different state? How many of you are separated from family? I know my family on my side lives over a thousand miles away. And I have a very big family. But I was thinking about people that are in the military and how those, those families are separated. Just thinking about Molly and Gabe right after they got, got engaged. And all of a sudden Gabe, uh, being, in the, being in the military, was sent away for basic training. And they've been to, apart for, for many, many weeks. A career may move you away from your family and your loved ones. Uh, I know for me... A uh, company moved me from Roanoke, Virginia to Richmond, Virginia, from Richmond to Charlotte, from Charlotte to Greenville. And each time, I didn't know anybody in those places. Maybe that happened to you. How many of you retired and moved away from family? A lot of you guys have moved 
a way for family to, to live on the lake. And that, that sums up a lot of our folks. And when we do that, we're away from family and it creates this, this feeling of loneliness. So who do you need to call? Who do you maybe need to send a letter to? Uh, and you need to do it as soon as you can. I, I remember when I was in um, high school, my uh, grandfather knew that he was going to be passing away. And so he wanted to leave me his golf clubs. He knew I would appreciate that. And so he gave me his golf clubs in person. And I, I wrote him a thank you letter. I wrote him a long letter. And after he died, my step-grandmother came up and told me that he read that letter every single day. And he gave me those clubs about a year before he passed away. So for a year, he read that letter every single day. The, the third thing that causes loneliness is opposition. H have you ever been attacked by another person? And I'm not talking about a physical attack. I'm talking about somebody ridiculing you. I'm talking about somebody criticizing you. Have you ever experienced that? How, how does that make you feel to be criticized, to be ridiculed? See, facing criticism is one of the loneliest experiences that you will ever face. Because you, you don't know how others feel about you. you. You don't know who's got your back and you don't know who's trying to take the knife and twist it a little bit. About four years ago, New Spring uh, made an announcement that they were letting go their pastor, Perry Noble, for domestic issues and alcoholism. But we've also seen that recently with Bill Heibel and James McDonald and Mark Driscoll, some other megachurch pastors. And people have criticized them. People have ridiculed them. But at the same time, many people still loved and supported them. Still other people stood by them. And so there was kind of these mixed, mixed ways of how people took that. Do you think they felt lonely? Do you think they wondered who they can turn to? And, and here's the thing, folks, this little disclaimer. No matter how you feel about them or their churches, we need to be praying for them and their families. It says in verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith did great harm to me. That word harm in the Greek means to oppose or to resist. And Paul's saying that Alexander the, the coppersmith opposed our message. And I believe that Paul was going through the same, same emotions that, that Perry Noble and Bill Heibel and James McDonald and, and Mark Driscoll were going through as they faced that opposition. The fourth thing that causes loneliness is rejection. Here's Paul. He, he's rotting away in a jail. He's lost his power. He's lost his influence. And everyone knows that he's about to be executed. I mean, is that the person you want to hitch your horses to their wagon? He feels lonely. He feels betrayed. He feels forgotten. He feels abandoned. He feels deserted. And when... Times got tough. Everybody left. Ever felt that way? Verse 16 says, At my first offense, get this, no one stood by me, but everyone deserted me. Can't, can't you almost feel Paul's pain in that sentence? At my first offense, no one stood by me. But everyone deserted me. What is Paul talking about in my first defense? See, Paul appealed to Rome to hear his case. And so he was sent to Rome and he was brought before Nero, the emperor, to state his case and so they would hear his defense. And instead of, instead of all his friends showing up in the courtroom to support him, no one showed up. I want you to think about that for a moment. Here is Paul, one of the greatest Christian men that ever lived in history. And no one came to support him. Paul's on trial for his very life and no one is there to speak up in his defense. He is all alone. And one of the most devastating forms of hurt is the feeling of rejection. 
So we, we experience all kinds of emotions. But here's the thing. The greatest emotional need that we all have is to feel accepted. To feel like we belong. I, I had a customer of mine years ago when I was in sales. and she was, Her name was Linda and she was telling me about her life. And she said that she had gotten a divorce a number of years ago. And she said when she got divorced, um, it was her husband's fault he had had an affair on her, but everybody took her husband's side. The church would not let her come back because she was divorced. Her children wanted nothing to do with her. And she says, Clint, I will never step foot in a church again. And she says, nobody wants anything to do with me, and I am so lonely. See, loneliness is painful. And people will do all kinds of things to make themselves feel better. Drugs. Alcohol. Online dating. Some people will just dive into their work and become a workaholic. Others will turn to materialism. All kinds of things. You name it. There was one guy that even went to a psychiatrist and said he wanted a split personality so he'd have somebody to talk to. So how do we overcome loneliness? That's really where we need to go. How do we overcome that? The first one is make the best of a bad situation. Did Paul have a big pity party for himself? Did, did he say, I spent 30 years in the ministry and this is the thanks I get? We don't see him do that. He didn't just pout in his cell. He decides that he's going to do something productive with his time there. And when you're feeling lonely, make the best of your situation. We've all heard the old saying, when life gives you lemons, do what? Make lemonade. In other words, make the most of what you got. See, loneliness tends to paralyze people. Loneliness tends to isolate people. And notice what Paul does. Verse 12. I have sent Chickacus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak I left in Troas with Carpus, as well as the scrolls, especially the parchments. See, lonely people have a tendency not to take very good care of themselves. They have a tendency not to eat right. They have a tendency not to exercise. They have a tendency not to even get out of their pajamas during the day. They have bad hygiene. And Paul's saying, you know what, as long as I'm alone, I might as well stay busy. So he asked for three things. Did you notice that? The first thing, he asked for his cloak. He asked for his cloak so he could be comfortable. He knew winter was coming. He wanted to be comfortable. The second thing he asked for was his strolls. In other words, he wanted to continue to learn, to continue study, to continue to be in God's Word. And the third thing he asked was for parchment. In other words, he wanted to continue to write. And he said, you know what? Look on the bright side. There won't be anybody to bother me. There won't be anybody to interrupt me. I'll be able to get something done. And so Paul made the best of a, a bad situation. And again, Paul is a people person. He, he would have much rather been out preaching somewhere. He, he would have much rather been traveling, traveling around the Mediterranean. He'd much rather have been planting churches. But instead he was stuck in this prison. But he figures out a way to make the best of his situation. I, I, I've visited a lot of people in hospitals over the years that have taken this several different ways. I, I've seen people that, that just waste their time. They know they're going to be bedridden for a while and they just waste their time and they just sit there and pout and just complain the whole time, why am I in this situation? But I've seen some other people in that same situation with a smile on their face and saying, you know what, I can't wait to this going through this time because I'm going to, I'm going to dig into my Bible and I'm going to do some studying that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And this, this gives me the opportunity to disconnect to be able to do that. Which one of them is making the best use of that situation? Think about it for a moment. Paul wrote most of his writings that we have while he was in prison. So when you're feeling lonely, make the best of your situation. Ask yourself, what could I do that would be different when people are around me? See, when my family was out of town, I always spent more time in God's Word because there wasn't anybody to interrupt me. 
The second thing how we overcome loneliness is refuse to be resentful. So we talked about the four most common causes of loneliness. Transition, separation, opposition, rejection. And here's the thing. We don't want to keep those things in our mind and keep playing it over and over and over again of the thing that caused our loneliness. You ever been left out? You ever had all your friends get together and they didn't invite you? And you see it on Facebook. How do you feel? How do you feel that they left you out? Do you feel bitter? Do you keep playing that hurt over and over and over again in your mind? Let's go back and, and look at verse 16 and see Paul's response. It says, At my first offense, no one stood by me, but everyone deserted me. May it not be counted against them. Everybody rejected him. And how did he respond? He says, you know what? I'm not going to get bitter. Because if I get bitter, that's just going to make it worse. So when we become bitter and when we become resentful, what happens? It, 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 it makes us lonelier. It makes us build walls around us. It makes us isolate ourselves. It makes us become critical. It makes us become cynical. And then we push people away. We drive people away. Why? Because nobody wants to be around that type of person, do they? What we need to do is play it down. Don't build it up. Don't make a big deal of it. The third way that we overcome loneliness is recognize God's presence. Where is God when you're lonely? Here's the thing. God's right beside you. Because there's no place you can go to escape the presence of God. God is everywhere. Which means He is with you all the time. And Paul is saying, I'm here all alone. I'm stuck in this dark, dreary Roman prison. The awful food. It's damp. It smells bad. I'm at the end of my life. I know I'm going to die. And all my friends have left me. But he writes this in verse 17, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. See, Paul used this time to pray. And you know prayer is the best antidote against loneliness? Building that relationship with God and it, you realize that you are never alone, that God's with you. And then the fourth way to overcome loneliness is focus on the needs of others. Get your eyes off of yourself and focus them on someone else. Quit having a pity party about yourself and see where you can do some good. Paul says, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the proclamation may, might be fully made through me and all the Gentiles might hear. Think about this passage. Even though Paul's waiting on death, he's focusing on others. He's still wanting to see people come to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. He's still looking for ways. How can I help other people? What we need to do in our times of loneliness, we need to ask the question, who can I be a friend to that needs a friend? There was an elderly woman and she had heard a sermon about we need to minister to other people. We need to encourage other people. And she was thinking about, well, what in the world could I do? I'm an old lady. And she thought about it. She said, well, somebody told me I had the spiritual gift of hospitality. And she lived in a, in a big apartment close to a very large university. And as she thought about that, she said, you know what? I bet there's a lot of students at that university that are lonely. They're away from home for the first time. So she got some three by five index cards and, and she wrote on that index card, are you homesick? And she wrote her address and her phone number and said, would you come by on Thursdays at four o'clock for tea? And what ended up happening was hundreds of students over the years would come to her house and they built a relationship with her. And 10 years later when she died, 80 of those students were her pallbearers and hundreds else were at her funeral. Nothing ends loneliness like helping someone else. Let me give you a nugget. 
Refocus your attention away from your situation and refocus it to someone else. So are you lonely? Do you feel like no one cares? Do you feel unloved? Do you feel excluded? Are you really alone? Is there really nobody? Was Paul really alone? It says in verse 11, only Luke is with me. Well, wait a minute. Luke's somebody. Luke was with him. Sometimes we feel lonely and there are people around us. We just don't see it. So what do we do with this message? You know what? If you're not lonely, praise the Lord. You need to praise the Lord for that. But here's what you need else to do. You need to keep your notes from this sermon because you will need them again one day. All of us experience loneliness at some point in time. But if you're feeling lonely, you need to know that we are a church family. We're a family and we are here for each other. We just need to know about it. So if you're lonely, let me give you four specific steps that you need to take. The first is let someone know. Now, I think a lot of people think pastors can read minds because I've been told that before. Well, how didn't you know? Why didn't you know? Well, nobody told me. If you're lonely, let me know. Let somebody on our staff know. Let somebody in the church know so we can be aware of it so we can do something about that. Join a small group. You know, our church has over 30 small groups. And if you need to find a help finding a place, call, call Christine, our, our minister of education. She will plug you into a group that you can be a part of. The third thing is don't isolate yourself. Don't, don't hide away. I, I remember a couple that um, was going to a, a church that I used to go to, and, and I kept trying to invite them to church, and I visited them all the time, and they just kept isolating themselves from everybody. They wouldn't get involved. They wouldn't plug in. And... And one day they decided to leave the church. And I'm like, well, why are you leaving the church? They go, because y'all's church is so unfriendly. And I'm going, what? Y'all just never connected. If you isolate yourself, you will never overcome those feelings of loneliness. And the other thing is, find something that you can pour yourself into. Man, there are so many ministries in our church that you can just pour your life into. Man, you can pour your life into those kids at Connie Maxwell. We, we got a cottage of boys over there that would love to have some people to interact with. Trail life, pouring your life into some of those boys that what we're doing there. Uh, the Lander student, that ministry where we go on Tuesday nights once this, this coronavirus is over. CR, Waterloo Elementary, being a part of the Good News Club. But find some people that you can help and get involved in that. So imagine... What would your life look like if you were able to overcome the loneliness in your life? God's Word told us how to do it. I'm going to challenge you to do it. I'm going to challenge you to follow those steps. I want you to refocus your attention away from your situation and refocus it on someone else. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray for all the lonely people. All the lonely people out there. And you know what? This whole situation, this whole pandemic has made that situation worse. I'm talking to people almost every day that just tell me how lonely they are. And so, Father, I just pray that You will help them to understand that you're, you're, nobody's alone because You're always with us. But there are also a lot of people in the world that would love to help. And there are still lots of ways that we can communicate with others that we can step in touch. And so, Father, I just pray if there's somebody here that is lonely, that they let somebody know. Let them, let them know how they're feeling. And Father, help us. Or, or they find a ministry where they can help somebody else. Father, help us all to, to not focus on ourselves and not to focus on our situation but to focus on others. That's what you've called us to do. And we just lift up all these requests in Jesus' name. Amen.